Hi, I'm Lisa Marie, and welcome to my channel, Living My Best Life with Lisa Marie. I'm so happy you're here. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you 32 DIYs made out of wood. Let's get crafting. These two really cute pieces were on their way to the Goodwill when I was able to get them for free from a friend. And I'm using the Agave color of Waverly Chalk Paint to paint just the very top of them. And I'm gonna use my little heat tool to dry them so I don't have to wait so long. Link in the description if you want one. And I'm gonna use a chippy brush and my White Kills Primer paint. And I'm going to kind of whitewash that. And then I'm gonna make sure that the edges are nice and white because I got a little paint over on the sides by accident. Now I'm taking a nail file and I'm gonna go around every hard edge around the outside. So basically there's the one at the top where the agave meets the white. There's the far edge where it would lay down. And then there's like a little middle ridge. And I'm also gonna do the knob on there as well, just to make sure that it gets that kind of distress look. I'm going to use my sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree just to go over the top where the agave and the whitewash were just to smooth it out a little bit. And then I'm going to take this polycrylic varnish by Minwax and I'm going to go ahead and just cover the top, the sides, and the knot. I have these little napkin rings from the Dollar Tree and it comes six in a pack and I'm going to use two for each of these, I will call them sconces, and I'm going to hot glue two together and kind of line up the seams on them so that it becomes a little bit longer. I'm going to do that for both of these and then what I'm going to do is use that almost like a little flower vase and I've got these flowers from Dollar Tree. I'm going to push the leaves up and then use my tin snips to go ahead and just cut off little pieces. I like it better when I can kind of decide the size of them and I'm just going to arrange them. I have two different kinds like a baby's breath and a little white flower and I'm going to put them together. I'm going to make two little bouquets, one for each of those little vase things that I made. I have this really cute ribbon with kind of a swirly design on it, white and like almost like a gray. And I got that at Walmart. And I'm gonna wrap it around the bottom of the bouquet. And then I'm gonna um, also hot glue at the end when I'm all done. And I'm gonna just do that too. I didn't wanna use twine on this one because it's a little bit more modern farmhouse and it's got the silver and I just thought this looked better. And then I'm gonna take uh, my tin snips at, when I'm done and I'm gonna snip the very ends of the little stems because they hang out just a little bit and I didn't wanna see those. They are such a handy tool. I will also leave a link for those in my description box. Next, I'm gonna put some hot glue on the side of the little vase and I'm gonna hot glue it right to the sconce. And then I'm gonna take my flowers and I'm gonna hot glue the very bottom to the inside of the little vase. And just make sure it's sticking nice and add any hot glue where I might need it to secure that. And then I'm gonna put a little under the flowers as well. I really loved how this turned out with the color and everything. I hope you guys like it too. I love this piece made by Liz, the official craft nerd. I have the sign she used and I think I can do it. I hope I can do it justice because this is gorgeous and I want one. For this project, I'm using this large tag sign from the Dollar Tree that was from Valentine's. I mean, it's large. And I'm gonna remove the bow and the tie. And I'm actually gonna use the back as the front, but I still like to finish my back, so I'm gonna sand off all that glitter. And once that's done, I'm gonna get out my little ladybug vacuum and I'm gonna clean it all up. And I don't know what I'd do without that thing. <laughs> it's in my Amazon store if you're interested. And then I'm going to turn the sign over and I'm going to use my Kills White Primer and I'm going to go ahead and paint it. And I'm not going to do like a heavy coat. I'm going to do a first coat and then just a little touch up and I'm going to dry it with my heat tool, which is also in my Amazon store. Save myself some time. 
Once that is done, I'm going to go ahead and get all the edges as well because they don't really look like wood on those MDF signs, so that helps a little bit. I'm going to get out my square ruler and I'm going to figure out how far apart I want to draw lines to create kind of a faux ship lap, ship lap look. Easy for me to say. And then I'm just going to draw them with a pencil. I'm going to use a technique that I learned from the Crafting Cousins and I'll link their channel below where you draw your lines in pencil and then you use something wet and you kind of smudge them. Gives that shadowed look around them and then they look like they're actual individual pieces of wood. So here I am, I'm using a baby wipe and I'm just going in and actually the dirtier the baby wipe gets, the better this works because as it gets dirtier, it smudges better. And then I'm gonna take my pencil, I'm also gonna go all the way around the edges on this entire sign and then I'm gonna take that baby wipe and I'm gonna do that same smudging thing all over again. Next, I cut out on my Cricut Welcome. I couldn't find the exact font that I wanted, but I found a really cute one. And then I had to print out these little squigglies because the font didn't like extend out on the E and the W. And I'm just figuring out where I'm going to place them and which ones I, I printed an extra couple squigglies just in case. Now I am applying it to the sign and then you see what I'm doing? I'm just putting those little squigglies as if they are attached to the end of the letters. This one was a little trickier, but I did figure it out. Had a little extra piece there, so I went in with my blade and I just cut that little teeny piece off. And now it looks like it's all one piece. I've got this beautiful greenery from the Target dollar spot. It was $5. And I'm gonna figure out how much I need to make like a little wreath, just a circle. So I'm gonna play around with it. When I find the right size or amount, I'm gonna cut it. And then I'm going to start gluing it down. Now, I'm gonna show you quite a bit of this because I want you to see what I did. When I first get the circle down, I mean, it's not like real pretty. There's leaves everywhere. But then I go around the whole circle and I start hot gluing individual leaves down in the direction that I want them to be and all of a sudden the center opens up and it becomes like a wreath like right now see how it looks it's just like blob of leaves and then here I go and I'm gonna go as I turn the sign I'm gonna be hot gluing the leaves down there I go turn it again put some down and as I work my way around it starts to take shape and it starts to look like a really cute little wreath so I could have cut all the leaves off individually and then put them down, but I wanted to leave them on the garland because then it looks like they're on branches and you know, that's how it should be naturally. So there we go, the center starting to open up and little by little that works and it really works well because in a moment you'll be able to see a completed wreath on there. And it'd be hard to know that it wasn't actually a wreath to begin with. So just a little trick that you can do if all you have is a garland and it's not shaped perfectly. If you take your time and hot glue individual pieces, you can make it work. And here I'm about to show you, there it is. And I think it looks cute. And now I'm gonna add different kinds of greenery just to make it more interesting. And I like that these have multicolors, a little bit of the white in there. And I'm just gonna stick them in here and there. I clip them pretty small so I could hot glue them down. And as soon as I get around, that'll be all the greenery that I'm going to use for this one. Now remember that bow that was on there that I took off? Well, I'm going to kind of quadruple up some jute twine. So, you know, basically just making it four thick. And then I'm gonna make a shoestring bow out of that. And at first I thought I would set it right on top of that little burlap bow, but then I realized, oh, it takes, it, it covers up that center, which I like so much. So after thinking about it, what I decide to do is shove it under the center of the bow. So there I am looking at it thinking I don't like it. Now I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it under that main part of the center of the bow and pull through one side of the loop and the tail. Really came out cute. It's hard to describe so I hope that when you look at it it will make more sense because this is just very hard to explain. Once I have it fluffed the way I want it, I'm going to hot glue it right to the top center. And then I'm going to take some jute twine and I'm just going to hot glue it on the back and wrap it around a bunch of times. It's not a particular amount, just till I like the way it looks. And then I'll hot glue it on the back and snip off the end. And now I'm going to finish my back with some craft paper by hot gluing it. Then I'm going to trim off the excess and 
this one's done. I really hope you guys like it. I was super inspired to create this and I really love it. For this wood DIY, I got this little um, sign from the Goodwill, and although it's super cute, I wanted to do something different to it, so I removed the twine and the clothespins on the front, and off camera, I took my sander and I sanded down the front so I could get rid of the words that were on there, and now I'm going to take my Antique Wax by Waverly, and I'm going to go ahead and restain it. I did like the dark stain, I just didn't want the words that were there. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on all over, and then I'm going to wipe it off the excess with a paper towel. I'm going to take my Arteza paint marker in white and I'm going to start drawing a dandelion that's already dried out. You'll see what I mean here in a second. And I'm then putting little things on the edges. I'm just kind of embellishing it a little bit because I just want this to be super, super cute. I'm then going to freehand the words wish and dream and I'm going to try to make it look like a typewriter font. This is freehand so doing the best I can. Actually I think it turned out really good and I'm going to go over everything again with my marker until it's a little bit brighter of a white. These markers sometimes you have to keep pumping them to make sure that they stay nice and fresh but it's worth it because it comes out so so cute. I'm continuing to make my little dandelion by adding some more lines and little dots on the edges. I'm also going to make a little circle in the center and then I'm going to continue making this look brighter and whiter as I go. I got this really super cute gold and white twine at Target of all places and I'm going to use that to go back through those holes and thread them through. I'm going to put a little tape on the end so I can thread it through easier. I'm going to tie a knot in the back in the first piece and then I'm going to just go back and forth just the way it was originally but using this really cute twine. Once I have it all threaded, I'm going to tie a knot in the back and put a little hot glue to make sure that it's nice and secure. Then I'm going to take a gold Arteza paint marker and I'm just going to embellish it a little bit like on those little dots on the end and then I'm going to add the three dots after the word dream and wish also in the gold. The clothespins that came with this were like with a glitter bronze and I wanted them to be more gold to match. So I'm using that same Arteza paint marker in gold and I'm just going to go over all the edges of those little clothespins and I'm going to put them right back on there and they're so cute. I think it would be super cute to write out your wishes and dreams and then put them on the clothespins and have them in front of you to remind you what you want to accomplish. Then I use a piece from a mop head. It's like a three strand cord and I'm going to take it down to one and I'm going to hot glue it over the widest parts of the little dandelion to give it that texture. I just love texture and this kind of brings it to life. To cover that very center piece, I'm going to kind of wrap a piece of this mop head around itself in a circle until it's the right size and then I'm going to hot glue it right to the center. You guys, I'm loving this one. You have to tell me what you think. I hope my channel is a fun place where you can come to be inspired to create something. I'd love it if you click the red subscribe button and turned on the notification bell. That way you'll always be notified when I have a new video ready for you to watch. I do all different decor styles on my channel and there's something for everyone. If you like what you see, be sure to hit the like button and leave me a comment. We are one big crafty family here. I was playing on Pinterest one night and I saw these really gorgeous pictures with reclaimed wood and I thought, I wonder if I could make something like that. So that's what I'm going to do. 
I got this really kind of funny looking sign at the Target dollar spot months and months ago. And then I got the little family word also, I believe, from it was either Target or Michaels. And I thought, this sign has some good bones. I'm not into the magic shop part of it. But I have this really cool contact paper that I use to make a faux reclaim wood headboard. And I thought, I bet this would look so good. I got it on Amazon. I don't think I still have the link, but I'll try to find one similar. And I thought, this could be so cool. So using this kind of MDF wood sign to make a reclaimed wood faux sign. And I'm just measuring the pieces for the two sides. And I'll also measure a piece for the middle. And then I'll cut it out with my little blade. This contact paper is so easy to put on. It's a pretty thick paper and I think that's what makes all the difference. If you find one and it's really thin, it's, it sticks and you have to keep moving it around. This one, it was really easy to manipulate and then I just kind of rolled it down slowly, the backing, and so that I would only reveal a little bit at a time so I could smooth it out. You guys, I'm so sorry my head keeps getting in the way. I've got to figure out a way to get my camera way up above so that when I lean in to see something closer, my head doesn't pop in. So please ignore that. I'm just using my little Cricut scraper. Honestly, you could use anything that has a flat edge and you could even use your hands if you want. It's just nice that this one kind of helps get rid of any bubbles and I was hardly getting any. Anyway, I just wanted to be extra careful. I decided to go ahead and paint those two bars of wood on either side, bars, I don't know what they're called, supports. Um, I decided to paint those in white and I'm using my plaster color actually from Waverly. And I just thought that looked really good. It made it, it really look more like wood. And so I did two sides on each one and the top and then of course the very top and bottom. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of antique wax and I'm gonna do some distressing, not just on the white, but also on the paper, the contact paper, because I want to make this all look like real wood. And that ends up doing that. And then I even do a little distressing with the plaster over the Reclaim Wood contact paper. And it ends up looking so realistic. It's a great technique. So if you don't have access to Reclaim Wood for real, you could easily do this with contact paper or even just by painting making it look like that. You could paint that if you really wanted to, but this was super easy, you guys. This DIY is so easy, and it's such a nice, substantial piece when it's all done. I'm gonna use my Kills White Primer to paint that wooden sign that says family. I want it to be very stark white. I do want this to stand out and this is whiter than the color plaster. And I'm gonna do the whole front, the sides, in between all the letters. I will not do the back, but I'll do everything else because you won't see the back, it's going to be attached. And here you see me going in and doing some more of that distressing with that white. I just wanted to give it more dimension and I felt like all the different colors really did that. So now I'm gonna take my family sign and I'm going to make sure that everything is good and I'm gonna sit it on each of those white pieces of wood that are on each side and it fits just perfectly that way. And I used some E6000 to give a permanent hold. I love how this turned out, I hope you do too. For this 
DIY. I'm using this welcome spring sign from the Dollar Tree and this really cool twine I got from burlapfabrics.com. Again, the information is going to be down in my description box. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my Kills White Primer. I love this stuff and I'm going to paint the entire back with one coat of it. I'm not going to go crazy and cover it real heavily. I don't mind if a little bit shows through because what I'm going to do next is use my antique wax, a combination of that by Waverly and Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel Paints and make a faux wood green look. The key to this is making sure your strokes all go in the direction that you want the wood grain to go in. So in my case, I'm going up and down and I'm starting off with lighter you know, amounts and then I'm adding more little by little until I get the look I want. You really can't do this wrong. You're just going for what you like. And I'm gonna use an Arteza paint marker. It's in brown and I'm gonna go all around the edges because it was kind of this light looking color and I wanted it to blend and look like the whole thing was a piece of wood. Now I'm gonna take my square ruler and I'm gonna create kind of like shiplap lines. And then I'm going to dig them out a little bit with a like putty knife knife I think is what I'm using or a blade just to kind of give that look. I'm going to actually be using that twine to outline a shape that I'm going to draw on there next. I'm going to take this little shape from the Dollar Tree that's a mason jar. Now this is smaller than I want it to be so I'm just going to kind of use it to get the overall idea of a mason jar. I want mine to actually be bigger and wider than this one because of the piece that I'm using to put it on. It would look too small if I use that little teeny size to draw. Now I'm going to take that awesome twine from burlapfabrics.com. I love it. It's like such a good quality and it's lighter so it really stands out against this wood grain look. Anyway, I'm going to hot glue it right around the outline of that mason jar that I drew and it's going to look so cool. I saw a picture of somebody who did something similar and I kind of made it my own but I just love the idea of it. So that's what I'm doing right now and I'm just going to go ahead and let you watch how I built my mason jar out of twine. Now at this point, as I'm building like the little, um, I don't know what they are called, but like the ridges around the top, I want it to look like my flowers are inside the mason jar. And since this isn't really like fully three dimensional, it's kind of hard. So what I did was I put them under the twine and that way when I lay the twine over it, it looks like they're inside. I mean, I just think that came out really cool. I love the flowers. I decided not to add the colorful ones. I thought it'd be nice to keep this kind of neutral, even though it's spring, because that way I could put it up whenever I want and wherever I want. So I'm just going to go ahead and add those little rivety things around the top of the jar. I decided to add a little dot of hot glue at the base of each of those stems just to make sure they stayed in place. And I like my projects to look finished, so I took some craft paper and I just hot glued it to the back so that way you wouldn't see the other design on it and it just looks a little bit more, you know, professional and polished. Not that I'm selling it, but in case I ever wanted to or even if I give it away, I just want to make sure that it looks nice on both sides. I'm going to take a little bit more of that really, really nice twine that I used already. I'm going to put a little tape around the end and then I'm going to poke holes back through that craft paper since there were already holes in the sign. And I'm going to feed it from the back to the front and make a knot. And then I'm going to put a little dab of hot glue there to hold it in place. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I love the knot in the front. I just think it's so cute and it adds such a farmhouse feel to it. And it makes the sign hang nicer because the string is more on the back. At least it's my preference anyway. <laughs> And of course, I couldn't just leave well enough alone, so I had to add some more of those little white flowers. I just felt like right in the front there, there it was really dark towards the top of the mason jar. So I just added a few more flowers, hot glued them down, and I think that just kind of balanced it out. You'll have to let me know what you think. I really like this one. I'm super happy about it. Can't wait to hear what you guys think in the comments.
This DIY is this whitewashed beaded wooded lantern for $40. I know I can do this for less. I'm gonna use some large paint sticks that I got, I think at Lowe's. I have some wood planks from the Dollar Tree. A sign that I had done a different DIY and a scrap piece of wood, a beaded necklace from Dollar Tree, an old toothbrush holder that I had I was gonna donate to the Goodwill. And then I'm using some Kills white primer paint that I love to use. I'm sanding the little scrap piece of wood that I'm using and then using my ladybug vacuum to clean it up. I will have that link in my description box. I'm painting all of the wood with that white paint and I'm just going to cover every side pretty much of everything. I'm going to take the paint sticks and I'm going to cut off that little top part where it has an indentation and I'm going to use my miter shears for that. I got those on Amazon and I love them. They make cutting so easy without using major tools. So I'll also leave you guys that link in case you're interested. And I'm going to paint those also. I didn't need the part with the holes on top of the toothbrush holder and it was really easy. I just bend it and it came right off. So that's great. And then I tried to sand the little ceramic piece and so the paint would stick better. I don't know if that helped, but I'm using my ink colored chalk paint to paint this part all black, including the little handle that I'm holding. I'm gonna paint all of that black because in the Dricklands inspired piece, the part that held the candle was all black. In order to get the color that was on the original piece, I used a combination of the fawn colored chalk paint and the white wax from Waverly. So what I'm doing is I'm heavily dry brushing the fawn onto all of the white pieces that I painted. And after that's done, I'm gonna go over it with the white Waverly wax. And it's gonna give me the exact color that I'm looking for. And I was just really lucky that I guessed right because I wasn't sure how this was gonna work. So this works out as a really nice technique. It almost creates like a blonde kind of a wood stain. I need to paint that little scrap piece of wood with the black ink colored paint because that piece in the original is black. And it had a kind of a scalloped edge for the legs, which I don't have. So I'm using these little blocks from Dollar Tree and I'm doing the same paint technique to them that I did with the rest of the wood. And I'm hot gluing them to the very bottom of the base of this lantern. Now I'm going to hot glue the little black square onto the middle of the top of the base in order to attach the piece that's going to hold my candle, which is that old toothbrush holder, I need to drill a hole. So I'm trying to find the center of that little black square. So I'm drawing diagonal lines across and the center obviously is where I'm going to drill. I'm going to put a little piece of tape there so that I don't splinter the wood. At least I, that's what I've heard you should do. So I'm going to try it. This is my first time, I think, or second time using my drill in my DIYs. I'm excited. So I'm a little gun shy. So so it takes me a little bit to push through and then I realize I can just push through and it's gonna work. Now I'm erasing my lines that I drew in pencil and I've got my hole. Now I do have to make it a little wider at some point but I'm able to push my little holder right through and I'm gonna hot glue on the bottom and along the top and then I'm gonna touch up the black paint where I put the hot glue so that it's not so noticeable. Next, I'm gonna take those silver beads and I'm gonna measure the length of my paint sticks. I need one for each of the paint sticks, so there are four of them, so I'm going to cut the right length for four of them. Then I'm going to take my hot glue gun and I'm going to hot glue it to the edge of the paint stick on all four of them.
Once all the beads are attached to one side of the paint sticks, I'm going to use my white paint. I'm going to paint the beads on all sides and in between all the little spaces. Then I'm going to use a combination of E6000 and hot glue to attach each of the stir sticks to the sides of the lantern. Actually, they're kind of like diagonal in from the corners and I'm going to hold them until the hot glue dries and then I will go around and I'm going to reinforce every seam where the paint stick hits the base with hot glue because I really want to make sure that these stay put. I'm going to take that top square, that the little plank that I already painted, and I'm going to hot glue that directly to the top. So putting a little bit of hot glue on each of those stir sticks. Now, I turns out I did not do this super evenly and it was sticking so well, I didn't want to break it off and deal with that. So it's a teeny bit crooked. Probably nobody will notice but me, you know. Now I'm gonna take my drill and I'm gonna drill into the cap piece. I'm going to drill a hole on each side in the middle because we're gonna have a little rope handle. I'm going to take some nautical rope, stick it through the hole, tie the knot on the underside, and then hot glue it so it sticks to the piece of wood. And then I'll cut off the nautical rope and then tie the next one in through the outside to the inside. Tie another knot and hot glue it. And that will become my little handle for this. And it's just so cute. I kept looking at the picture. I kept thinking it would have a little pull handle, but it just has a little rope and it's adorable. The last step is to hot glue this little cap piece right onto the top. And that actually completes the DIY. And I think it does look a lot like the original one and I'm really happy with how it turned out. You'll have to let me know what you guys think. I saw this super cute little box that says Got Mail on Pinterest for $22.71. And I thought, I bet I could make that. So I found these two little crates from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna remove the tags and then I'm gonna get my utility knife out and I'm going to cut off one of the short ends on each one because what I wanna do is attach them together to make a wider box. I am definitely fast forwarding through this part because it took some serious muscle. I mean, either that or I'm just super weak and that actually could be it. So maybe it would be easy for anyone else. I have a problem on my kitchen counter with where we need to put our mail. And so this is going to solve that. And I'm really excited about that. Now that I've separated those pieces, I've sanded them. And of course using the ladybug vacuum to clean it up. And I will link that in the description box. Now I'm going to use my Kills All Purpose Primer paint. I use this a lot. It goes on almost like a white chalk paint. It's perfect. And I did literally paint everything, bottom, top, sides, everything. I have this Buffalo Check tissue paper and I honestly can't remember if I got it at Dollar Tree or Walmart or Hobby Lobby. I'm not sure guys, sorry. Now I'm just cutting out the pieces that would be the right sizes approximately for the inside of the box. So basically two of every piece I cut and I'm going to trim them and try to size them in there and I'm going to Mod Podge it just like I've done in the past when you've seen me Mod Podge. Super easy. Try to get as close to the right size as you can. Lay down the Mod Podge, put it in the tissue paper, then lay down some more Mod Podge and then when all of the pieces are in there I'm going to, once it's dry, you don't want to do anything until the tissue paper is dry. And then I'm going to rip off the edges and sand the remainder so that it looks nice and clean and you can just watch me do that right now.
On the short side of the boxes, there's a little hole that looks like it would have been like a handle. So I'm using my X-Acto knife. I'm just going in there and I'm cutting around that hole and removing the tissue paper from that spot on both sides. Now I'm gonna use a combination of E6000 and hot glue to secure the two pieces together. Now, I've been told that you don't overlap the two, that it doesn't work as well. So if you notice, I'm just putting E6000 on each side and a little bit in the middle of the long side and then the hot glue around that. And then I am putting it together. I'm gonna to wipe off the sides real quick because sometimes that E6000 oozes out. And same with the hot glue. And then I'm gonna clamp them and hopefully they will stay together. I'm gonna come in with some more hot glue down that center seam just for a little extra security. And now I've got some sticker letters from the Dollar Tree. And yes, I have a Cricut, but I don't always use it because sometimes I like the stickers that they have and it's cheaper than buying vinyl. So I am spelling out got mail and I'm Mod Podging them. Even though they're sticky, I really wanna make sure they stay. And I couldn't find a good question mark, so I just used a black marker and I drew it myself. Now I'm gonna go in with some ink chalk paint and I'm gonna distress it. Now this is my first time I'm doing that with ink color. I usually do the antique wax or truffle or something else. I gotta be honest with you, I don't like it. So I end up going over it with some white and I'm using a little makeup sponge and I must have got it too wet because I feel like I overdid it big time. So I'll just go in and then I'm gonna use a little bit of silver, or actually it's called steel, and I'm gonna fix that up. Now I'm using a little buffalo check ribbon that I got at the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna wrap it around the very top and hot glue that in place. The original one didn't have this, but this was just an inspired piece, so I decided to give it my own spin. And I like doing that. I'm not going for an exact dupe here. In keeping with the farmhouse look that I've got going here, I'm gonna take some twine and wrap it around the bottom several times. No particular pattern or rhyme or reason, and I'm gonna hot glue it. And I'm gonna take these little lavender pieces from the Dollar Tree with a little piece of greenery behind it. I'm gonna hot glue that off to the left side of this box. I just think that makes it super cute and again, real farmhouse feel. Now I'm going to make a little bow. I'm just going to wrap it around my fingers, tie it in the center, and then clip the two loops on the end and just hot glue that right over the little end of the stem of the lavender just to finish it off. I forgot to film myself doing the next part, but I found a little uh, chalkboard with a clothespin on it from Dollar Tree, and then I put a little rub-on transfer of a little letter from Dollar Tree, and I added that to the right side. I really love how this turned out. Let me know what you think in the comments. I found this little basket at Goodwill. It's actually in my uh, Goodwill haul video, which I will put up in the cards and link below. I do not like the color of that kind of like wood slash basket stuff on the side there. So I am using my plaster color paint by Waverly and I'm gonna go ahead and paint the outside of that. Now I don't really wanna go in and paint the inside because I think that's gonna be a big mess. So I've come up with another solution to deal with that. I'm using my burlap wide ribbon that I got at Walmart and I want to just cover kind of the center of the outside and I'm going to do some folds in order to create that. So first I've cut the right size that would go all the way around and now I'm going to fold one end in and hot glue it and then the other end in and hot glue it and again creating some texture and interest and so right now I'm just gluing those pieces over each other.
Now that I've got the burlap the way I want it, I'm going to wrap it around the middle of this basket and then hot glue it to the basket itself. I decided to use some white coffee filters, just kind of hot gluing them around the top edge of the inside of the basket to hide that other color of the back side of the basket. And it just kind of lightens the whole thing up and it was super inexpensive to do this and it's an easy solution and I can pull it out anytime if I want to change my mind. I took a little pick of lavender and I cut some pieces. I'm going to hot glue them together after I trim the edges and I'm just going to create a little floral kind of bouquet. I'm going to wrap some nautical rope around the bottom and attach it right where that seam is of the burlap so that will hide it and it'll also give it a little bit of extra decor and I just love lavender. It's my favorite. <music> I'm so excited how this one turned out. I really like it. It's just so simple and I can add other florals inside if I want to. For this DIY, I'm going to use that little uh, tray, the wooden tray and the birdhouse made out of wood. I'm also going to use these little knobs that they sell at Dollar Tree. I actually end up only using the star ones. I don't use the moon ones. And I actually don't end up using any of these ropes. I start off using it and then I don't. And then this little garden edger piece and I do cut that up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my tray, remove the tag, and I'm gonna paint it in the chalk paint color Fern by Waverly. I really love this color. I finally found it. My Walmart has been out of a lot of the Waverly paint colors, so they just finally got some and I stocked up and I'm really excited. Also, when I start out a project, a lot of times I throw everything on the table that I think I might use, and then little by little I figure out what I'm actually gonna use. So what you see in the beginning isn't always what I'm gonna do. And I painted that entire tray, top, bottom, sides, everything. Everything. Now I'm going to take the birdhouse and I'm going to paint all of it in plaster. That's going to be my base coat. Plaster is another Waverly chalk paint color, kind of a slight off-white. I'm going to take the white antique wax by Waverly and I'm going to just lightly, no, I wouldn't even say dry brush because I'm doing it a little heavier than that. So let's just call it kind of a white wash. And I'm just covering all of the sides and the edges and the tops and the inside and the bottom because I want to give it a little bit more of an aged look. Even though I love that color fern, I love it with that white wax. It really looks nice. Quick poll question for you guys. How many of you actually use the antique white wax? I haven't heard that many people using it, so I'm kind of curious. Now I'm taking my square ruler and I'm trying to determine what the middle of each side is. And once I find it, I'm gonna put a little piece of uh, masking tape there and I'm going to drill a small hole and that's gonna be where my little star knobs are gonna go, one on each side. Now, originally I put these in there because I'm gonna create like a rope hanger for this and I needed something on the opposite sides. The handles are there already, but the um, longer sides didn't have anything. I eventually take the rope away and I don't make a hanger out of it, but I decided to leave the knobs because I kind of thought they were cute. Let me know what you think when I get all done with that.
Now time for the fun painting. I'm going to use some antique wax by Waverly and the color crimson, which is a really pretty red. I'm going to paint my whole barn around the sides, front and back, red. Oh my gosh, isn't that red gorgeous, you guys? I just love it. Who doesn't love a red barn? This is so fun. I don't think I've ever painted one other than on a piece of paper, like back in grade school. Does anyone even say grade school anymore? Or did they say elementary school? I know in England they call it little school. What do you guys call it? I'm kind of curious now. I'm out of that scene, so I don't really know. I'm gonna use the antique Waverly wax to do the sides and underneath of the roof, kind of like the edging, if you will, and then also the very base of this house I'm gonna, or house, the barn now it is, I'm gonna do in that color. I really like that. I decided to leave the roof in the plaster color, but I'm gonna go ahead and very lightly dry brush it with the antique Waverly Wax. And that just means I put a teeny bit on my brush, wipe most of it off, and then drag a little bit on it. And then I'm also gonna do the same thing all around the sides so I can make the, the barn look old and dirty. And I'm gonna take an Arteza paint marker in the color brown, and I'm gonna paint on a door in the front. And then on the two sides, I'm going to do windows. And in the very back, I'm gonna make a little trellis, you'll see. And then I'm going to add some white crossbars on the door and on the windows. And I don't know why, but they're just not even at all. I don't know why I had such a hard time. And my Arteza paint pen in white just isn't working really well right now. I probably need to replace the tip. So I didn't use it and I should have because it probably would have come out so much better. Anyway, it's an old barn. Things would be broken and rickety, so it's okay. And I'm loving my trellis, you guys. I saw a picture of one, so I kind of was drawing it, looking at that, and I just think it came out so cute. Sometimes it's just the little details that really make something special and I really have fun with this one. And I do go over it with the white and then I also distress it lightly with the antique wax when I'm all done so that it doesn't look like stark white because then it wouldn't make any sense at all being an old dirty barn. I am using a very soft little cheap makeup brush like from Dollar Tree to do this kind of distressing. It is so nice because the little bristles are so wispy. So I just want to mention that in case anyone's looking for an option other than a chippy brush. I'm going to hot glue that barn right on to my little tray. And you see I've got that rope there because I was making a hanger. And now I'm putting some Spanish moss. I'm just kind of gluing it down all inside the tray. I want to cover up those screws from the knobs and just fill it in all around because ultimately this is a birdhouse. And there's my little edging piece. I cut it down to one of the little loops. And now I'm gonna end up cutting it even shorter. I'm cutting off the little edging so that it's a nice curved, smooth piece, as smooth as I can get it with tin snips cutting. They do a great job, by the way. They cut right through that plastic. The hardest thing is just getting the right angle so you don't cut off too much. So you see there now I've cut off some of the bottom and I've made it shorter and I'm gonna put it in. And then I realized there is a screw in the middle so I've gotta cut that middle piece a teeny bit shorter. And it's about here when I realized, no, this rope isn't gonna work. So I took it all out. And now I'm snipping that little middle piece so that it will all fit in there. And I'm gonna hot glue that little piece of the edging right in. And now it looks like a wrought iron fencing kind of a decor and I love it. This one even looks cute from the back. The only thing you could do different is put a matching piece of that garden edging up against it so it kind of rounds it out. It doesn't look hollow in the back. I also took four of those teeny little blocks, painted them with the plaster, and then did some Waverly wax over them to antique them a little, and I hot glue them to the very bottom. It's because of those knobs that I needed to do that so that it would sit flat. It just kind of sat just a little off. And by putting those four little blocks underneath, that was perfect. I love this one so much. Tell me what you think.
For this DIY, I'm using the inside of a Dollar Tree canvas, just the frame, some skewers from Dollar Tree, and some tumbling tower blocks. I'm going to take my sanding sponge and I'm going to just make sure that all of the edges are nice and splinter free. And I'm going to clean up any of the dust left behind with my ladybug vacuum. And all of my tools are down in my Amazon store, so feel free to check it out in case you need some. I'm going to use my Kills White Primer and I'm going to paint this entire frame, back, front, inside, all everywhere. Just the whole entire thing. I'm going to use my heat tool so I can dry this quickly and move on to the next step. I'm creating a little mini window and so for the pane dividers I'm going to use these little skewers. At first I'm just going to tape them down and paint them in that same white paint front and back. Then I'm going to take my tumbling tower blocks and I'm going to paint those as well. Just the parts that you're going to see. And now I'm going to figure out where I'm going to be placing them all. I'm going to create a little window box for florals. It's going to be so cute when this is done. I'm just positioning everything and then I'm going to start hot gluing it to the actual frame and creating my little box. Once all the pieces are in place, I'm going to go back in with the hot glue and the underside and just kind of reinforce every seam so that it's nice and secure. Now I'm doing the next level, which is going to be the very front, and I'm going to put them vertically and then again reinforcing wherever I can. I don't think I need anything stronger than hot glue because I'm just putting light florals in here, but if you were putting something heavier, I would suggest a more permanent stable glue. Next I'm going to take my four skewers and I'm going to figure out exactly how long they need to be to put two vertical and two horizontal to make my little panes for the window. And I'm just going to use my little snips to go ahead and cut them to size and then I'm going to hot glue them down and do the first the vertical ones and then I'm going to do the horizontal ones. And this is so easy. They're definitely secure. I put hot glue under and over each of the ends of the skewers so there's no question that this is staying in place. Next, I'm going to very lightly dry brush some antique wax by Waverly over all of the white surfaces. And basically, I'm going to put a little bit on my brush, wipe most of it off, and then just kind of drag it around the edges and just wherever I want to see a little bit of distressing. Like I said, this is going to be a very, very light dry brush. I just want a little bit of an effect of it not being like stark white. I always save styrofoam whenever I get something in a package, so I'm just going to cut a little teeny rectangular piece of this very messy styrofoam and I'm going to hot glue it into that little window box that I created. And then I'm going to take some really cute Dollar Tree florals and I'm just going to snip them all to make them the right size and I'm going to start putting them inside of this styrofoam and it just looks so cute already. Oh my gosh, I love these colors, I love this pick and um, this is just turning out so, so cute. I'm going to add some of these cute little off-white flowers. I think it's just the right touch with the purple and the yellow and the green. And like I said, I'm just really loving this. And then I'm going to take some jute cord from the Dollar Tree and I'm literally going to hot glue it to the back and wrap it around, kind of crisscross. And then I'm going to push it around and kind of shape it the way I want it. And this is just to add that little farmhouse touch to it. And I absolutely love how this looks. I had a Goodwill find that had this little burlap flower on it and I took it off. I figured I'd save it. And guess what? It's perfect for this DIY. It's going to hot glue it right to the center and literally that really makes this one so cute. Now I'm going to take a little bit of craft paper to cover up that back area because I don't want you to see any of my styrofoam or any of the mess. I'm just going to hot glue it and trim the edges and then I'm going to make a little hanger out of jute cord and this one's done. And you guys, I love it. I think it's so cute. You could hang it. It can be like sitting on a shelf whatever you want just like bringing a little bit of outdoors indoors and it's just so cute in farmhouse i hope you guys like it let me know
For this DIY, I'm going to take this really cute tray that I got at the thrift store. And I've had it for a long time and I actually liked the pattern when I bought it. But now I want to do something different with it. First thing I'm doing is cleaning it with some alcohol. And I keep my alcohol in that little container that you just saw a moment ago. Very easy to use and I got it I think at Dollar Tree. And now I'm using the color ink from Waverly Chalk Paint to go ahead and paint the entire thing. And that's just going to be the first layer of paint that I use. The next layer is going to be the wax in white from Waverly and I like it because you can still kind of see the dark color sort of peeking through and it gives it a little bit of you know a distressed type look almost a whitewash and I really like the effect plus you know because it's a wax it's a little bit more slippery and it just goes on with a little bit of a shine and I really like the way it looks and you can even see the brush strokes which is something else that I really like about it. I want to put something in the center of it that's decorative and I got this home sign from the Dollar Tree. Oh, actually I think it was Target Dollar Spot. Sorry about that. And I have this burlap kind of ribbon I got from Walmart and I thought, you know what, I love texture and I want to uh, kind of mix the elements with the metal and the burlap and then the wood. So I'm just going to put this diagonally across, cut off kind of those little edges and hot glue it inside. And then I'm going to hot glue the word home right across that. And I just think that makes it so cute, but it's simple and I can put things in the tray and style it that way. I really love how this one turned out. It's simple, but yet it's really homey and it's interesting to me with all the different textures. And I'd love to know what you think. Uh, would you have added the burlap or would you have just put the word home right on the tray? Let me know. Besides YouTube, feel free to connect with me over on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. Same name, Living My Best Life with Lisa Marie. I post all kinds of stuff on there behind the scenes and just what's going on in my day-to-day -day life. Hope to see you there. This cute little tray that I found is from Holland or the Netherlands and it's got that blue and white tile. There's four pieces of tile in the front and then it's got a wood, you know, base. And I'm going to clean it with some rubbing alcohol because of course, you know, it gets dirty sitting in thrift stores. And then I've got these peel and stick tiles from the Dollar Tree and I just think they're gorgeous. So I'm going to start off by centering a solid one right in you know, the middle <laughs> and then I will try to piece the rest together around that. I think that is the easiest way to do it. It's not like a floor where I want to start in the corner. I want this to have a center piece if you will. And I'm going to get some more of those tile pieces and I'm going to figure out the best way to attach them. The hardest part was getting it flush up against the edge. A couple times I got it right there and a couple times there was a gap. So you'll see in a little bit how I try to deal with that gap. But I think it came out good and so I'm not going to worry too much about that little teeny gap. I'm going to go ahead and just continue piecing it so that the lines are all, you know, uh, where they're supposed to line up. Now when I'm all done with these pieces, I end up with four little corners left. That's where it gets tricky because it turns out I only have three pieces that fit in those corners. So I kind of had to wing it on the last one, but I think I figured out a way to camouflage it. So you'll have to let me know if you think that that worked. So you see how I got the corner there and I'm going to stick it in. And like I said, I've got three of those and I'm using a blade to just kind of 
cut all the way up to the edge and sometimes I do a good job of that and sometimes I don't and I don't know why that is. It like there, I had a big gap so I was able to cut another piece on that one but it wasn't as easy to do on the other ones. And then when I get to the very fourth little corner, I didn't have a piece like that. So I found one that looked the most similar. You see how it's not the same? But it's not like horribly wrong. Anyway, I came up with a solution. I'm gonna use an Arteza silver marker and try to go around those edges where I didn't quite line it up flush to the wood edge. And it never really gets it the way I want it. So then I am going to try with some steel Waverly chalk paint. And so I go ahead and I do that, but then you see the line. So then I got out my chippy brush and I thought, you know what, I don't want this to be quite this shiny anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna dry brush over the whole thing. But first I'm gonna paint the wood base all in that steel color. I love that color and I think it'll match really well. Not too fond of that shade of wood that it was. So as I'm doing this, it took about two coats. And then I also took a little bit of the silver metallic folklore paint and I just very lightly dry brush that over the gray on the handles and the base and now I'm doing the steel over the top of the tiles and that gets rid of some of the shine and it helps camouflage some of those edges that I filled in. I'm going to do that also with the silver on all of the wood and the center and then because I still see that gray I will come back in with some of my white paint and just very lightly dry brush around the entire thing and that way it really camouflages it and so I feel like once I hit it with the white you know and then I was getting it on the wood so I thought "Ooh, I kind of like that so I very lightly dry brushed and you guys know dry brushing is you put very little on your brush wipe most of it off and then drag it across your surface that way you can control just how much is on there I am loving how this turned out I really do think it came out really nice and I did put Mod Podge all over it and you will see it in the final reveal what it looks like when it's all dry but I'm very happy with how it turned out and I hope you guys like it. I found this cute little, I don't know what exactly it is, a little drawer with a, maybe it's a pencil holder or something like that for a desk. They look like little fake books, but I found this at a thrift store and I thought I could do something cute with this. And I'm kind of going to go with the same color scheme as I did before. I'm going to prime it with my Kills White Primer. I went ahead and I just did a light coat of that and I'm going to use that Agave Paint by Waverly. I'm going to cover the entire drawer and the little pencil holder. The only thing I'm not going to do is the knob. Once they're all painted, I'm gonna take my metallic silver from Folklore Paints, and I am going to just paint that little knob. I'm gonna take that white kills primer that I had and I'm going to do a little bit of whitewashing kind of distressing like I did on the last piece because I want them to have a cohesive look and it's like a dry brush I'm just putting a teeny bit on my brush wiping most of it off and then lightly dragging it across until I get the look that I want and really there's no right or wrong way you can do this until it's exactly to your liking that's the beauty of crafting you get to do what you want I wanted this piece to have just a teeny, teeny bit of shine, so I took that metallic silver and I kind of dry brushed it all around. You know, nothing heavy, but I just wanted to give it a little extra pizzazz. I'm going to take these white flowers and white baby's breath from the Dollar Tree and a part of a foam ball that I had used and I'm going to cut it so that it will fit inside of what the pencil holder would be because I want this to become a vase. So I'm going to stick that in there and then I'm just going to cut the flowers, push the leaves up and arrange them just you know the way that I like them and using the tin snip to cut them to the right lengths. 
have these little silver like Mardi Gras beads that I got at the Dollar Tree and I decided that instead of filling it with moss or anything else, I'm just going to fill it with these silver beads and I think it just looks really cute, kind of goes together with everything else and just gives it a little bit more of that modern look. But still farmhouse. I am super happy with the way this is turning out. I'd love to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments if this is something that you like. This DIY is being made out of these little cauldron things I found at the Dollar Tree. They're in the St. Patrick's Day section, even though I wasn't actually intending to use them for that. They end up kind of looking like that. And then I've got a canvas, which I'm just going to use the frame. As you see here, I just pulled off the canvas and then I use this little teeny tool. It looks like a crowbar. It wasn't mine, so I can't list it below. I'm out of town and borrowed it from my brother. So what I'm going to do, I don't have any of my normal craft supplies with me, so I'm really improvising. I'm going to use some brown paint and water it down. And I'm just going to put it all over the frame and then wipe off the excess with a paper towel. And that will be my stain. I didn't want a real dark one anyway, and so this worked out just perfect. Perfectly. Now I'm going to take those little cauldrons and I want to hang them from kind of like the middle of the frame but first I'd like to paint them. So I'm going to sand them so that the paint will hopefully stick better and I'm going to mix some green with white to make a really nice pastel green. Now that they've been painted and it took two coats and then I added a little bit of white over the top to distress them lightly. I'm going to put some twine around the rim of the top of each one. I'm just going to hot glue it right to that spot and I think that makes it look really cute. I picked up some flower picks from Dollar Tree and the Target Dollar Spot and they were so nice and I'm looking for, you know, kind of the more natural looking ones where there are different kind of greens and then a little bit of those white kind of, I don't know what they are, flowers. <laughs> now I've got this ribbon and I love this ribbon with the black chevron on the burlap and I'm using that over the top and it's going to facilitate a hanger. So you'll see the ribbon attached to the top of the frame and then I'm going to take a little piece of jute twine and make a loop and put it on the back so that when it's hung up you don't actually see that part but then you just see the pretty ribbon. And now I'm going to determine where I'm going to attach the jute across the frame and hot glue it. And I'll cover each end with a little bit of ribbon so that I can hang the three little cauldron pots. And now I'm just stringing the three little, now they're planters, <laughs> across with the jute twine. And then I will hot glue it to the other end and put some ribbon on it. I'm going to make three little simple bows out of jute and put them on the front of each one. And that's it. It was super easy. It came out so cute. You'll have to tell me what you think. I hope you guys like it. Now nothing says spring more than flowers. So I'm gonna create a cute little flower box. I'm using one of those little wooden crates from the Dollar Tree, some flowers I got between Dollar Tree and the Target Dollar Spot. And also this tissue paper that I got at Dollar Tree that is so pretty and very spring-like. What I'm gonna do now is measure out the pieces I need to be able to decoupage this tissue paper all around the outside of this crate. I'm not gonna do the inside or the bottom because there's really no need. I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I'm going to cover one side at a time and then I'm going to lay out the pieces that I cut to fit. Made them just slightly bigger but it's easier to work with than the big sheets of tissue paper. And now I'm going to go ahead and secure every part of it to the crate and then press it down. As I mentioned earlier I don't have any of my tools with me so I didn't have my brayer and I just went ahead. This is such a small piece it was really easy to just use my fingers very gently and press it down. And then I moved on to the next side, did the same thing and both of the ends I did as well.
I'm going to take my little sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree and very gently sand at the very top edges all the way around the crate and let the, and this is after the Mod Podge dries by the way, you don't want to do it before that with tissue paper because it'll pull it right off. But if you do this very gently when it's dry, it'll just separate. And then all you have to do is a super light sanding right over the edge like I'm doing right there and then I move on to the next side. If I had been home and I had my X-Acto knife, I could have really easily done the in-between the slats, but instead I used this stem that I didn't need, uh, I'd already cut the flowers off of it, just to break through that tissue paper and then I was able to use my little sanding sponge very carefully and get rid of that excess paper in there. Now what I do after I get all of the paper off is I go back over all those edges with the Mod Podge just so there isn't any little extra piece that's lifted that I didn't catch and that way it'll all adhere to the crate. And honestly it looks like it was always on there. It looks so good. I love that technique. Now I'm going to add this white nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. It was a three strand cord and I pulled it apart and I'm just using one of the strands and I'm going to hot glue it all the way around the top edge of this little crate. I didn't have any floral foam handy, so I just bunched up a couple of white napkins just to fill in the space. And then I trimmed off some of these little uh, pink and white flowers and some beautiful greenery. And literally, that's it. This one is done. I love it. I hope you guys love it too. And it really does feel like spring. Today we're going to do farmhouse style DIYs. I picked up these three letters from Walmart in their little craft section, an H, an M, and an E. I also have this sign from Dollar Tree that had a bunny on it and Happy Easter. And I'm just taking off that covering the paper with the design. On this particular one it came off super easy with a little heat and my putty knife. Doesn't always work that easy. Remove the little hanger for the moment I'm using my White Kills primer that I got that I use so often. And I'm gonna cover the whole sign. It'll take about one and a half, two coats to do it. And I'm actually covering the front where I remove the paper. That way the back will be nice and neat and I don't have to worry about anything because it doesn't have anything on it. I learned a technique watching some of my friends, Kay and Trish, on the Crafting Cousins. I'm going to put a link for them because they're really talented. After my paint dries, I'm going to be drawing lines, so you've got my square out, to create a faux shiplap. Now they use a pencil. I was doing this different in the past, so I wanted to try it the way they do. Right now I'm just measuring about two inches between each line that I'm going to draw, and then I'm going to draw them. And then I'm going to take a little cloth. Now they use their finger. I can't stand the lead on my finger, not because of lead poisoning, but just because I don't like it. Anyway, I'm gonna get it just slightly damp and I'm gonna smudge the line. And it doesn't matter if it smudges too much. I'm just thickening it up a little bit here. But here I go, look at that. I'm smudging the line and it comes out so good. They were right, of course they were right, they're amazing. I'm gonna do the edges too. And then I'm gonna take a super chippy brush, one of my worst brushes, and do a little white over the top and that kind of just makes it look like worn shiplap. Do you guys love that or what? It's probably my new favorite way to do it and that's how I think I'm gonna do it from now on. And I'm just making sure that the ends had enough on it. I think I didn't do as much as I wanted so I went back and just did a little more pencil and then smudged it up a bit. I'm gonna take my letters now and I'm gonna leave that white that was left on my chippy brush and I'm gonna use my antique wax and I'm just gonna go ahead and paint the letters and that way they look like a lighter kind of antique brown. And this isn't real wood I'm painting so it's not like it's gonna look like a stain, it's like MDF. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cover it and um, I will go in and get the sides as well. I'm just not gonna make you watch all of that. And of course I'm speeding this up because watching paint is not fun unless you're actually drawing something or painting something specific, you know, like a design. 
Now I'm going to take my letters and I'm going to position them on my sign. And if you notice, I have the ship lap going vertically up and down. And I'm just going to do one of those home signs that you've seen a million people do and just do my own spin on it because I don't have one and I want one. So I'm going to do the H above. I'm going to use these florals I got at Dollar Tree to make the O. Just kind of wrapping them around. I'll hot glue them together and I'm going to hot glue my letters directly to the sign. Now the sign's just going to be hanging up on the wall and I think hot glue is going to hold enough. Depending on where you're going to put yours or how it is, you could choose to use a more permanent type of a adhesive like E6000 or Gorilla Glue or something. Your choice, whatever you think will work for you. They weren't heavy. I wasn't too worried about it. So I'm just putting them on and then I'm going to play around with those flowers a little bit and make sure that I get them in the right shape. Also, I'm touching up any teeny tiny little spots because silly me, I was painting the letters while the white sign was sitting on my table. I don't do that friends move it away <laughs> and you won't get splatters unless you want splatters and then put it right there like I did oh my gosh silly me honestly though I just don't let it get to me it's crafting it's fun I can fix it very few things are not fixable so I've got my cute little flower O on there and now I am attaching some I guess this would be jute twine nautical rope it's a little it's kind of in between size wise and I'm gonna get it in that hole I'm gonna make a knot on the front I'm gonna put a little hot glue there to keep the knot in place and then it's gonna be my hanger you guys this was fun and easy I am so happy with how it turned out and I cannot wait to hang it up in my house Okay, you guys, honestly, this one is the easiest. I said the other one was the easiest, but no, this is the easiest. I've got this home sign from Dollar Tree. It was, they put it out right when Valentine's stuff started going out. It's got a heart on the end. And I have this tissue paper. I don't end up using the tissue paper because I decided to simplify things. I tend to go the other way and I decided to channel my inner DIY beauty on purpose, my friend Leon up. She does things very simply and I love them. And so I'm trying to do that more often. I'll put her channel link in my description below so you can see what I mean. I'm going to take this, I'm gonna use my plaster colored paint from Waverly, it's trap paint. And I'm gonna cover this, but I'm not gonna go for like a super, super full coverage. I'm just gonna let a little bit of that kind of wood grain peek through and I'm gonna paint the sides as well but again kind of a sloppy paint letting some see how some of that's peeking through and I'm just gonna do it till it gets to what I like because I'm not gonna distress this I'm gonna let the sign distress itself now how's that making my craft work for me yeah I like that we can call that working smarter not harder are you with me on that everyone <laughs> I have these really cute floral picks. I've been using them in a lot of DIYs. I got them at the Target dollar spot. And I'm just gonna pull off some of those little fern pieces and I'm gonna hot glue them around that heart. And then there's a couple little like white, off-white kind of flower pieces that are up at the top. And I'm gonna add those to the heart as well with a little hot glue. And that's it, you guys. This one will be done. You could hang this on the wall. You could sit it on a shelf. You could put it on a tiered tray or you could hang it in the middle of a wreath. I think it's got so many possibilities because of the fact that it's simple, neutral, and it would go with any design that has a farmhouse feel to it. I think this is gonna be one of those really versatile pieces that I'll be able to use in a lot of different ways. And to me, again, that is working smarter, not harder. <laughs> what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments.
found this house shape piece at Dollar Tree. Now, I somehow didn't film me removing the flowers and painting it with plaster colored chalk paint. Now, I used my Cricut to cut out these heart shapes using some scrapbook paper. That was actually my very first thing I did on my Cricut, and it was pretty easy to do. So, I used some painter's tape to kind of decide where I'm going to place them. I wanted two on the top and two on the bottom, and then I'm going to put some words in between. Now that everything is placed, I'm going to Mod Podge them on. I use my Cricut to print out the words home sweet home and this is before I got the new transfer tape so I'm using my painter's tape here and I'm attaching that right in the center between the sets of hearts and this went on really nice and easy and it was a cute little font and you wouldn't have to have a Cricut to do anything like this you could use stickers you could use the transfer type of letters where you rub them on or you could even use a paint marker or a marker to do this if you have writing that you're comfortable with and I did put a little Mod Podge over the top to seal it I don't think I always will do that but I did this time mostly because there was already Mod Podge on there I found some ends of painter sticks I had used from a different project I was using my cool little miter shears I'll link that in the description that is one of my favorite tools so far by, by the way I don't know how I worked without it before and I'm trying to create a roof so I'm figuring out the angle and the shapes and I'm using my pencil to draw some lines until I finally get it shaped the way I want it. I'm going to sand the edges where I cut just to kind of smooth them off so that there aren't any little rough sides and then I'm going to get my hot glue gun out and I'm going to attach them to the top. I'm going to stain the roof pieces with the Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel. You know, I used to use the Antique Wax by Waverly, but then I couldn't find it anywhere, so I switched to the Burnt Umber. And I'm actually really liking how it works. You just kind of wipe off the excess. And then I decided it wasn't really dark enough and matched with the other decor, so I added some of the ink-colored Waverly paint to it just to darken it up a bit. And I'm also going to do a very small amount of dry brushing around the sides and the front just so it matches with the other decor pieces that I have where it's going to be sitting. Something I did off camera was I took a very, very lightly damp baby wipe and I kind of wiped over the top of the distressing and it smoothed it in a little bit and it made it look, there it is right there, it made it look a little more natural. Now I know everyone's going to be shocked when I say I feel like it needed something more, but it did. So I did a three strand cord and I cut it and made a little shoestring bow out of it. I love doubling and tripling up the twine. It gives it such a neat look and texture. And I literally just made this cute little bow, pulled all the little loops out, cut the edges so that they were the same length, and I hot glued it right to the center, you know, where the top of the roof meets. And I think that just totally finished this one off. It's so cute. It can be for Valentine's or it can be for any time of the year. Please let me know what you think in the comments. For this DIY, I wanted to make something for my husband's desk. He has things everywhere, and I don't know how he finds anything, although he says he knows what, where everything is. But I thought I'd make him a little organization center so he could hang reminders, keep his pens and pencils, that kind of stuff. So I'm using these planks from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna use six of them, and then these two little drawers. And I'm actually going to take out the little drawer inserts and use those and leave the others for a future DIY. I've also got this piece from another Dollar Tree sign that was just a piece of plastic with a little clip on it. And then I found this super cute little ampersand sign at a thrift store. And then I took a little Dollar Tree frame, took out the center, and I'm going to use that piece as well. I'm using the Antique Wax by Waverly right now to apply it as a stain. So I'm just putting it on and then rubbing it off. And then I'm going to hot glue each of these planks together. And once I, once I get them all together, I'm going to go back and I'm going to shore them up on the back with some popsicle sticks, as you will see here. 
So funny story, I don't know why, but I only stained five of those planks instead of six, and so later on you'll see me adding the six because I realize, wait, this isn't as long as I needed it to be. Oh well, things happen, right? I'm going to take those popsicle sticks, figure out how I want to place them. I'm actually going to have to trim the middle ones down a little bit. And then I'm just going to hot glue them over the seams and across so that this way my sign will stay together. And I forgot to show it on camera, but I do finish off the back of the sign because I love doing that with craft paper. To make this look a little more finished and high-end, I'm going to take some more popsicle sticks and I'm going to measure across the front of that drawer where the little cutout is and create some little wood planks to put on there. I love that look. Once I have my four little wood planks for each of those drawers, I'm going to hot glue them right to the front. And then I'm gonna sand off any rough edges. And I'm gonna do the same thing where I stain the drawers using the Waverly Antique Wax and then rub off the excess. I want everything to have a really nice, cohesive, finished look. Also, I want it to look a little bit on the rustic side because that's what my husband likes. Now I'm going to take that little frame from the smaller picture where I took the center out and I'm going to also stain that with the Antique Wax by Waverly. And I'm going to do everything but the very, very top because I'm going to do a galvanized look for that one. To create the galvanized look, I use a little bit of the metallic silver, a little bit of gray, a little bit of black, and a little bit of white. And I just keep dabbing it on until it looks the way I want it to. And I'm going to be comparing it to my little ampersand, which is actually already galvanized. So I want it to look like they belong together. And I think I accomplished that. It's a super easy technique. It's, it's just something you play with until you get it the way you want it. You could go as distressed as you want. You could add a different color for rust, like burnt umber, whatever you like. Honestly, it's to your liking and this is the way that I wanted it to look. And you can see it's starting to look a lot like metal instead of wood. I'm gonna take a little bit of jute twine from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna make a hanger. I'm gonna hot glue it to the back, make a little loop, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of masking tape over each side. And that seems to really hold those down perfectly with the combination of the hot glue and the masking tape. And after I cover the back with the craft paper, you won't see the masking tape or any of that. You'll just see the little twine hanging out. I wanted to give it a little bit of color, so I have this really cute scrapbook paper and I'm gonna trace that piece of plastic all around. And we're gonna use that plastic as a little whiteboard because you can use dry erase markers on it and then wipe it right off if you need to give yourself reminders or have little notes. So I'm just gonna put a dot of hot glue in the four corners and I'm going to attach it to the back so you can just see it right through and then it'll always have that pretty pattern behind it. It's right about now when I realized that I didn't do all six planks because I was positioning everything and all of a sudden I went, uh-oh, there's not enough room. <laughs> so I think I did it off camera, but I added the six plank and now I'm going to position everything. I'm gonna hot glue my little drawers down with those wood planks facing forward and I'm going to attach the little blue whiteboard and the box at the top that has the ampersand in it. And I'm loving the way this came out. I got this black faux leather. It was actually gifted to me by my friend Lisa Kennedy, Dollar Mom, here on YouTube, and it's from the Dollar Tree. I'll link her channel below so you can check her out. Thanks, Lisa. And I'm going to attach it to cover that seam, and I'm gonna use it in two other places just for a little bit of embellishment, and I just really like it. It kind of made it a little more masculine, and since this is going in my husband's office area, I wanted to make sure it wasn't overly feminine because he likes things, like I said, a little rustic and maybe a little more masculine. And I'm just continuing to position everything and then hot glue it down. And this is the little frame that's gonna go around the ampersand. And once that is dry with the hot glue, then I will also do the same thing to the ampersand itself and attach it. And I'm just reinforcing all those seams in there to make sure it stays. It's not holding anything, so I didn't need to use E6000, but I did wanna get a pretty decent hold. And I'm also going to attach the little 
dry erase plastic and make sure that that's down. And boy, this is just shaping up really nice. I'm so happy with how this is turning out. I really like it. I hope you guys like it too. And the good news is that my husband loves it. So that's, I guess, what really matters, right? Since it's a gift for him. And I am gonna add a couple more pieces of that faux leather, like I mentioned, just one above and below the little dry erase plastic, because I thought that really just kind of made it look a little bit more finished. And like I said earlier, high end. And you know, you could use this to hold pencils and things, or you could put flowers in the bottom, whatever you like. This DIY is super simple. I'm using a coaster, two little pallet planks from the Dollar Tree, some florals from the Target Dollar Spot, some burlap from Walmart, and that's it. And I'm going to attach the two little planks together, and then I'm going to stain them with the antique wax, putting it on and then rubbing off the excess. And I'm gonna do both sides on this because that's how I'm gonna finish this one off. It doesn't make sense to put craft paper on it because of the slats. And I'm just making sure to cover every single piece of wood with this stain. I am also going to slightly distress the little coaster since it looks like it's got little wood planks on it too. I'm just going to go ahead and add some of the antique wax to that so that it will match with this kind of a rustic wood theme. I'm going to take the burlap and I'm going to cut out a piece so that it can lay right under the coaster and on top of the wood. And I'm going to fray the edges a little bit. I just want to add that for just that little extra embellishment and kind of that, again, rustic feel. I'm going to use just a little bit of hot glue and be careful if you do this because the hot glue comes right through the burlap and you can burn yourself. I had to be super careful because I always burn myself but I need to be better. And then I'm also going to hot glue the coaster right on top of that right in the center. And I'm loving the way that looks but of course I'm thinking it needs something more. So I've got these little florals. I'm going to cut off some little greenery pieces and position them at the top. I'm going to add a little flower and I'm also going to add a little jute bow just because I just feel like it needed something extra. <laughs> I'm actually very happy with how it turned out. For the jute bow, I just wrapped the jute around two fingers until I you know, got it thick enough. And then I tied a little, another piece of jute right in the center. And then I just cut open the loops. And literally that's all I did to make that bow. Super easy and it's really cute. And now I'm just hot gluing down the greenery, kind of like with the stems in the center so that it goes out on each side. And then I will place that little bow. And then in the center of the bow, I'm gonna put a cute little flower. And I think that really finishes this piece off. And I really like it. You know, it's not too many steps. It was super simple to do. You could go without the florals. You could go without the bow, but you know, just do it to the style that it fits your home and what you like. For this DIY, I'm using a Dollar Tree canvas, a couple pieces left over from an old Dollar Tree sign, and some other supplies as I go. And I'm going to also use that folk art yellow paint. I'm going to paint just around the edges of this canvas because you won't really see the rest anyway. I'm going to dry it with my heat tool, always down in my Amazon store. I'm also going to paint the edges. And then I'm going to take those two little circles and I'm going to use these napkins that I got at Dollar General for a dollar. Aren't they cute? 
and they're two ply so I'm going to pull them apart. I'm just going to cut out the part with the pattern on it. I'm going to use some White Kills primer and I'm going to paint the back of those. But first I'm going to put some of the Mod Podge down because it's ripped. It's going to absorb the paint so much by putting a layer of Mod Podge down. I help that. So I put my regular, you know, primer paint on there. Now I'm going to trace where they're going to be on the canvas and cut my napkins accordingly. Then I'm going to use the Mod Podge and lay down the napkins on both sides of that paint. And then I'll cover the top of course with the Mod Podge as well. Then I'm going to take my circles and I'm going to use another set of napkins that I got at Dollar General that were also very cute. Two ply as well so I'm going to separate them. And this one says squeeze the day and it has a cute lemon on it. I'm going to cut those apart because I want to use them separately. So I'm going to put squeeze the day on one of those circles and then on the other one I'm going to take two of those lemons and I'm also putting another coat of the white paint because I could see that it really needed it. Now I'm going to use a nail file to go around the edges after the napkin has dried and then get rid of that excess. Now I'm cutting out the other lemons and I'm going to Mod Podge those to the other circle. There will be two of those. Do the same exact process. This one didn't hang over so I didn't have to sand anything. And then I'll just cover them both in Mod Podge. And then I'm going to cut out two little smaller lemon pieces from the napkin and I'm going to put it above and below the Squeeze the Day circle that I made. Once that's all done, I'm going to use my yellow, it's actually called Lemon Yellow Arteza paint marker. I'm going to go around the edges of those circles so they aren't bare and then let it look a little bit hang over to the front. And then I'm going to hot glue the two circles onto the canvas. Isn't this turning out cute? I'm going to take some painter's stir sticks that I got at Lowe's and it was just a dollar for ten. I'm going to measure where I need to cut them for the width of this canvas. I'm going to use my little miter shears and cut them and then I'm going to hot glue them to the top and bottom. And I did sand around the edges of the stir sticks after I cut them so they wouldn't be sharp. And I'm not going to stain them. I like this color, the natural wood with the light yellow sign. I think it looks really cute. I'm going to turn it over and do my usual hang around the back, a little piece of rope, hot glue, and some masking tape. And then this one looks so good. I'm just going to touch up the spots that didn't have Mod Podge on the front. And this one's done. This will go so well with my other lemon decor. And I really hope you guys like it as much as I do. For this DIY, I made a printable using Canva, and I will have a link as a free printable for anyone who wants to use it. I also got a Dollar Tree sign, some antique wax by Waverly, and my White Kills Primer. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the little shamrock. I'm actually not going to work with that side. I'm going to cover it with some craft paper, and I'm actually going to use the back and turn it into the front. There was some burlap on the front, but it was on so good, I just said, oh, forget it. I'm not going to try to take that off. So I used my white primer paint, and actually I realized, oh, I better draw my shiplap lines first, so I stopped. <laughs> I actually dried the paint first really quick with a blow dryer so that I could go ahead and do this. And then I'm using a utility knife to actually cut into each of those lines so I see the difference, so they really look like little shiplap planks. And now I'm going back over the one that I did with the paint. And I'm going to finish painting and I'm doing all my paint in one direction so that it looks like wood grain when I'm done with the whole technique that I'm going to do. I added a second coat but as you can see I'm not doing a heavy coverage. I'm letting some of the background peek through and that's just going to add to what I'm trying to accomplish here. I'm going to take the antique wax and I'm actually going to take a little brush and go through each of those lines that I carved out. And this is a technique that I learned from Jackie at Bless Beyond Measure and I will link her channel down in the description box. It's such a cool thing. I take a blending brush and at, while it's still wet and I just kind of go over it and I blur it. And you can see there it looks kind of funny right now but it's going to look really good when it's all done. And now I'm taking a screwdriver, I guess, and I'm actually going back through those little lines that I carved out, and this really makes it look like separate pieces of wood. And I absolutely love the way this turned out. I'm going to take my printable and I'm going to use a technique that I learned from my friend Holly at Hot Humble Pie. I'll leave a link for her channel down in my description box. 
So you spray a little water around the edges of the printable and then you go ahead and rip the edges. So that gives it a really nice kind of rustic vintage look. And then I'm going to go ahead and use Aileen's decoupage stuff. It's like a Mod Podge. And I'm going to attach that to my sign. Once I have that attached to the sign, I'm going to go over the top again with some of that decoupage premium liquid. Once that dries, I'm going to take a utility knife and I'm just going to cut through those lines but over the top of the paper and that way it looks like, again, they're all individual little planks. Now I'm taking my antique wax and I'm going to lightly go over each of those plank lines again on the part of the printable that had not yet been distressed. So I'm going to do that for all of them and then I'm going to blend it in and then I'm going to distress the rest of that sign because it's so much whiter than the rest of it and I want to try to make it look, you know, as vintage as possible. I felt like the colors were almost a little too vibrant on my printable, so I added some extra antique wax on there to just dull them a little bit. And I just think that really helped a lot. And then I used a baby wipe to wipe it off, and I kind of kept going back and forth, putting some on, taking it off, until I felt like it was distressed enough. Next, it was time to cover the back with my craft paper. So I just cut a piece and then hot glued it and trimmed the edges. And that makes it have such a nice finished look. Plus then you won't see all of the St. Patrick's Day stuff on the back. In my stash, I had this little piece of leather and it was just perfect to make a hanger and it just fit the theme kind of so rustic. So I poked the holes through the craft paper because there were already holes in the sign. I came from the back so that the knots will be in the front, tied the knot on each side and that's my hanger. I just trimmed the edges and I think it looks so cute. This inspiration piece from Kirkland's is adorable. Now it wasn't outrageously expensive at $16.99, but I thought I could do it for less. I'm gonna use one of those little house pieces from Dollar Tree, some paint, some craft sticks, and some Jenga blocks. I'm gonna start with seven Jenga blocks and I'm gonna hot glue them together side to side to make the base. I'm gonna paint this base black using the ink paint from Waverly in the chalk paint. Next, I'm going to remove those flowers and the pieces of felt from the top of this house. For some reason, I have the hardest time with this. I use heat, I used a utility knife, you name it. I finally got everything off and then I sanded it. That seems to be the, the go-to for me is sanding those things off. And then I cleaned it up with my Lady Bug Vacuum and I'll put that link in the description box for you. I am going to paint this with some white 
acrylic paint. It's from a sample I got at Lowe's for like a dollar, great deal. And I just love the way it looks when it goes on. I'm gonna remove the stickers from the back and I'm gonna paint the entire house because I want the back to look nice too. The inspiration piece had some lines on it to kind of look like shiplap. So I'm using my square ruler to do that. I ended up going a little off on one of them, but it's okay, it still looks nice. I don't know what I did or why I did that, but there you go. Now I'm gonna take my little sanding sponge from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna lightly sand down those lines to dull them a little so that they look a little bit more like just edges of wood. I have these little greenery rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree and so I need to recreate that wreath that was on the top and so I cut a bunch of little pieces and just kind of curve them around and then all you have to do is remove the back and just kind of scrape over the top and that releases from the plastic and when you lift it up it will now be attached to your wood. It's a very very easy transfer, it looks really nice. I mean it was a dollar and I've used this for so many projects and I still have a bunch left over. So if you ever see this at Dollar Tree you should definitely grab it. I used some uh, gingham or buffalo check ribbon, um, just like the inspiration piece had, although mine is just a little bit bigger squares. And I made a teeny little shoestring bow with it. I'm gonna hot glue it right on top, just like theirs was. And then I'm gonna trim the tails of the bow so that it looks like the one that I'm trying to recreate. Now the roof was a challenging part for me. Never did well in geometry in school, <laughs> and this kind of be with a little bit of geometry. So I'm using these craft sticks, trying to figure out how long I need to make it, measuring it. I'm using my miter shears, which are awesome. Put the link for that in the description too if you're interested. And I'm gonna sand them and try to create a roof line. Now it occurred to me as I was messing with this that I needed to lift up a little higher. So after I figured out the top pieces and kind of the front pieces that would go next to them, I realized I needed to lift it up. So I put a couple of Jenga blocks, one on each side, I hot glued it down, and then I'm gonna paint it black and start assembling my roof. That solved my problem. Now anywhere that I overpainted a little bit with the black onto the white, I did go back and I touched it up after everything was dry. So if it looks a little messy, it's all taken care of. <laughs> I'm hot gluing those two front pieces directly onto the Jenga box. And then the other two larger craft stick pieces will go right across the top of the roof and meet at the point. Now I did find there was a little gap you know, you can't see it in the picture here, but it's there. So I did end up putting in a little teeny piece of a craft stick that I cut and that fixed it. It, it raised up the point a little better. And so I just paint that black after I glue it in and then I can put those pieces of the roof on and it works perfectly. I really love how this one turned out. It's so cute. There's the original in the picture. Now, I did not film for some reason what I did on my Cricut, which was I looked up fonts to try to match the best I could. And so there are basically four different fonts here. And then I added a tail with a black marker to the word family. And I don't remember the name of the fonts. I'm so sorry. I really hope you guys like it. Let me know in the comments. For this boho DIY, I am using a wood round that I got from the Target dollar spot for $3. What a great deal. One side has kind of a distressed white wash and the other side is just wood. 
Now I'm using these decals. I was going to put them in the DIY and then I changed my mind. So right now I'm just using them like a ruler to draw a straight line. I'm going to remove the twine hanger for the moment so that I can paint and not get anything on it. I was kind of not sure what I wanted to do as usual. And then I got this inspiration. I would use these little river rocks that I got at Dollar Tree and I am going to create a nature type scene but in a kind of boho way. You'll see. I'm going to hot glue those rocks on there around that bottom up to the line that I drew the lower line. I am going to end up filling some more in later, but right now I'm just trying to create a border around the edge. I had to go back in and add some more glue on some of the rocks because they don't lay flat, so I just had to make sure I had enough glue to catch whatever edge I could. Try to use the flattest side possible. I found these beads and I think they were at Dollar Tree. I decided to use them to create water. I thought, what a cool idea. I'm just snipping them and creating a kind of a fun water design. And then I'm gonna hot glue this down and I'm gonna paint them with various colors to make it look like different shades of water. I apologize if my voice seems really gravelly. I have year round allergies and sometimes they just act up like today. Along with the water and rocks, I wanted to add a little section that kind of looked like sand or dirt on the coast. I'm using some jute twine for that and just kind of putting it in and curving it around as I get to the edge so it has like a pattern to it. add another row of those beads at the top and I'm going to paint some white over them to make it look a little bit like kind of waves or foam from the water. paint all those little spots between the rocks with kind of like a beigey color so it's not so bright and white. I'm going to use this little container to create a circle which is going to be the sun and I got these really cool looking bronze draws. They're shimmery kind of metallic looking from Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut them at an angle on each end in order to form the circle of the sun and I think that's going to look really cool. Thinking way out of the box, I cut these little leaves off of the flower pit so they would look like bird's wings. And I'm going to paint them in this really dark, dark blue. And then I'm going to hot glue them into the sky in the background of my picture. And it'll look like three birds three-dimensionally flying. And oh my gosh, I love it. I mix some white with some really pretty kind of uh, darker sky blue to make a regular sky blue. And now I'm going to start at the top doing the darkest blue and little by little I'm going to add white to it and fade down. And I want it to look like a smoother transition between the blue into kind of the whitish blue. You'll see here.
Next, I'm going to pick up the little birds now that the paint is dried, and I'm going to hot glue them into the sky. And they look like they're flying right now over the water. And I just love that because I've never actually been to a body of water where I didn't see birds flying over. I'm going to add a little bit of greenery. Um, there's always greenery somewhere near the water. And so I'm using some of those little white kind of flowers. And then on the other side, I'm going to use some green. And I just think that really adds so much to this kind of mixed media, boho, modern farmhouse piece. And I'm just loving the whole three dimensional aspect of it. What do you guys think about that? It's something very different and um, you don't see it quite as often on YouTube with Dollar Tree type of DIYs. After a few paint touch-ups, I'm going to use one of the single strands of the three-strand nautical rope and wrap it around the sun to give it a rounder shape because the straws were much harder to turn into a complete circle. And this kind of finishes it off too. I really love it. You know, adding the rope and using the wood round is the farmhouse side of it and in the twine too. And then the other stuff is what kind of makes it boho. So it's really a combination of the two. And then I'm going to put the hanger back in the twine. I'm going to knot it in the front on both sides and then secure it with a little bit of hot glue and then this one is done. I really like it. It's different for me. It's not my normal style but it was fun to do, very challenging and uh, I'd love to know what you think. I really would. I think it's it was a lot of fun to make. Back in the fall, I made some porch sitters and I'm going to make another one. I had an extra piece of wood left and I was it has already been painted white with primer and I'm going to go over it with another coat now and I'm just going to make it a brighter white. Now obviously this board is a lot bigger than my crafting desk so I had to kind of set up a little stand here for it to be on and I'm just standing up in the room and you'll see my dogs walking around tried to crop it as much as I could but they're there and one of them does wear a diaper you will notice that and after I'm done painting I did use my heat tool I finally broke down and bought one. Oh my gosh it's awesome I ordered these really cool decals on Amazon I will put a link down in the description also for the heat tool and I'm gonna put Mod Podge down first so there's a smoother surface for the decals to stick on and they're just sticky on the back you just peel them off and I'm placing them right on top of that Mod Podge after it dries and then I'm gonna actually put Mod Podge over the top of every decal that I use because I want to seal this since it's gonna be outside and I am using the Aileen's decoupage premium decoupage Podge. I don't know what it is. It's like Mod Podge. It's just a different brand and it costs a little less when you get a bigger bottle. And I have these stencil letters that I have used before on the last port sitter I did. That's why there's paint on them. And I'm just going to position for the word welcome. And they're really cool font. I really like it. I actually ripped the E so I had to use some tape to kind of put it back together again. But hey, it worked. And I'm going to put Mod Podge underneath that also. And I heard that helps with bleeding. So I'm going to try this. And this has got to do the trick because I'm I'm a terrible stenciler and this might be my first time doing a good job. So I'm going to have to tape them down one letter at a time because of the tape. It's going to put too much space in between the letters and I don't want that. So I'm just going to do one at a time. And I got this paint sample from Lowe's. It's really pretty kind of sage color, light sage. And it's a Valspar paint. It's just a regular house paint. And I cut off the end of a little foam brush just so I could have a little like spongy thing to dab it on. I couldn't find my regular dabbers. They're somewhere in my messy craft room that I'm in the midst of reading doing right now. And then I'm holding down the parts of the stencil that stick up a little and I'm, there goes the dog with the diaper. You just saw that. <laughs> and I'm just going carefully and I'm going to do the first two letters a little bit slower and then I'll speed this up because you don't need to see me do the same thing over and over and over again. And here's the big reveal to see if this worked. And I'm really excited. It did. Oh my gosh. I now know I need to use Mod Podge underneath when I stencil. I'm so excited. So now I'm moving on to the E and just positioning so I know exactly how far apart. And then I'll tape that on. And now I'll stop talking and let you watch the rest of the word welcome get done.
I've seen on Pinterest where people are putting on their welcome signs, welcome-ish. So I found some letters that are stickers from the Dollar Tree and I did the I-S-H on the bottom. I think it's so cute. And part of it is like you're saying, it, you're welcome, depending on how long you stay and depending on who you are. <laughs> so anyway, I just thought that was kind of a good laugh and I like it. So I'm covering those letters with Mod Podge. And now I'm taking that sage paint and I'm gonna take a little art brush and I'm gonna fill in all the letters a little darker because I intentionally was dabbing very lightly so I wouldn't bleed. So now I'm just gonna go back and fill in all the letters and also the O has a little break in it and that's not really a style I like so I'm just gonna fill that in. It was the only one that had it so that was kind of funny. And now I really like the way they look. I think they came out great. And more Mod Podge because I'm gonna add another decal on the bottom. This particular roll of decals that I ordered on Amazon came with a bunch of gorgeous florals and a bunch of butterflies. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna position the florals and the butterflies all over this sign and just kind of wherever I think it looks pretty. There's no rhyme or reason. And then I cover each and every single one of them with more of, it's not really Mod Podge, I keep calling it that, but you guys know what I mean. It, I, what if I say aliens, nobody's gonna know what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna keep calling it Mod Podge, even though we know it's not. Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> And now I'm going to put some more of that down, put the bigger decals and then some more butterflies. And then when I'm all done with that, I'm gonna put that Mod Podge over the word welcome because I wanna seal that paint as well. I will probably at some point need to go back and deal with the edges because I did not do that, but I wanna make this a two-sided porch sign at some point and I wasn't ready to do that today. So I left that part to be done the next time I do the backside. And the backside will probably be for summer. This is for spring and then you know I'll have a summer one and then eventually I can do a fall and winter one which I did for my neighbor but I don't have one so there'll be more projects coming down the road. I am really loving how this is turning out and I hope you guys like it. It feels very much like springtime to me. It's also very welcoming. So, well, welcoming-ish, right? <laughs> For this DIY, I'm going to take this little kind of a wooden tag with slats on it from the Dollar Tree and then a piece from another Dollar Tree item. I'm going to use some scrapbook paper and I'm just going to cut out different sizes and attach it to the different parts of the wood. And I'm really enjoying mixing all these colors and patterns. As long as they're similar colors, I think it goes together really, really well. Attaching my scrapbook paper that I cut out with a glue stick and then I'm going to use a little blade and cut through the slats on the back so you can see through them and the scrapbook paper doesn't cover them. Once that's done, I'm going to get my little crate from the Dollar Tree ready using the steel color of chalk paint by Waverly. I'm going to paint the whole thing. And then the very bottom I'm going to paint in the elephant color. I'm going to use that elephant color to distress as well. And I'm going to try a new technique where after I do a heavy distressing, I'm going to come back with a baby wipe and wipe it down and get it to the exact look that I want. And you know, if you wipe off too much, add a little more and so forth. It's really easy to do. And then I'm gonna take the back side of this one. I like to finish my crafts off and I am going to paint that as well. In order to attach the two pieces, I'm gonna use some craft sticks. And what I'm gonna do is cut them in half using my little miter shears, which are in my Amazon store. They're a really cool tool. And then I'm gonna use this tight bond, a very strong adhesive that I also got on Amazon. And I'm going to attach the popsicle sticks right where the slats would be on my tag. So there's gonna be four of those, but they're really just halves. I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna put some weight on it. I only had two clamps that would fit in there. And then once that's dry, I come back in and I'm going to paint it with the steel color so that it all matches. And then I'm gonna also put glue on those slats and attach my piece. So there you go. And it actually is staying really well and I'm very happy with how it looks and it's very cohesive. And I'm gonna clamp that in and let that dry. I actually let it dry overnight just to be sure. 
I decided to use some silver vinyl and so I'm going to put the plaster color of chalk paint distressed heavily over the front. That way you'll be able to see my vinyl lettering on there. And I did decide to cut out the pieces so I could apply them separately because of the spacing that I needed. I tried to measure in advance but I didn't do a great job with that. So I am just going ahead putting it on. I'm using my scraper tool to make sure that the vinyl stays down and then I'm going to carefully remove the transfer tape and there you go. I love the way this looks. It's so cute and I'm really thinking it's so perfect personalized now and it was so easy to do. And I have a little bit left of this little garland piece so I cut it in half and I applied it to the top and I thought that was just a great finishing touch for this one. I'm going to take my blade and I'm just going to cut those little pieces that are over the slats just like I did with the scrap of paper so that I can make sure you can see through it. And now I've got some floral foam that I'm going to cut down to size and I've got this really cool greenery from the Dollar Tree and I'm cutting everything into smaller pieces so I can arrange them exactly how I want to. And then I'm going to add these blue flowers and some more greenery. I like the different textures and I like, you know, there's some white flowers. I just love that. And now this one's done and I really hope you like it. I love this spring DIY so much and it's so simple. I got this little wooden birdhouse at the Dollar Tree and I also have some tissue paper from the Dollar Tree that I think is gorgeous. I love that color and the flowers. I'm using some plaster chalk paint from Waverly. I'm going to be decoupaging but I like to put paint underneath it because sometimes if you don't it kind of yellows the color a little because the wood isn't a pure white. So in case you're wondering why I'm painting it that's why. I'm also going to use the antique wax and I'm just going to paint the base of it in this plaster color and then I'm going to use the antique wax to stain the roof pieces and basically I just put it on and then I take a paper towel and I wipe off the excess so it has that stain look and you can still see the wood grain. I'm going to use the tissue paper for decoupaging around the outside of the birdhouse. Not the very base it's sort of standing on but just the sides. So I'm cutting out some pieces so that I have a smaller you know, piece of tissue paper to work with, less excess, especially because the birdhouse is so small. And I'm going to get my Mod Podge out and I'm going to lay some down and then I'm going to put the tissue paper on top and then I'm going to add more Mod Podge on top of that and then I'm going to wait for it to dry, very important, otherwise the tissue paper will rip. And then once it's dry, I will come in with my little sanding sponge and then I will start getting the excess off. And if I can't use the sponge in some of those little tight spots like by the roof, I have a little blade that I'm going to use to try to cut it off instead. This part was a little bit intricate, you know, kind of getting into all the little nooks and crannies to get away the excess tissue. It's harder to do on smaller pieces like this, especially when there's raised edges and so forth. But you know, a little patience and just a little bit of elbow grease and you'll get it done. For the front of the birdhouse, I needed to tear some little pieces and put them on individually because there's that hole in the middle and then the little perch. Putting a whole piece wouldn't have worked. So instead I just cut out some pieces, or actually I rip them because it looks better when you decoupage if you rip the edges. And I just placed them all around and that's how I covered it. It really worked out fine and no it's not like a cohesive design but it still looks really good because it was a bit of a muted pattern on the tissue paper anyway.
I decided to add a little bit of greenery. I had this pick I got at the Target dollar spot. And I just cut off little pieces and I attached them with hot glue around the whole of the birdhouse. And then there was this one little kind of flower. And I put that right at the very peak of the roof there in the front. And I just think it looks so cute. I'm absolutely loving how this birdhouse turned out. It's gonna look really cute on a tiered tray and that's what I think I'm gonna do with it. What would you guys do with it? And have you ever decoupaged a little birdhouse like this? I think it's the cutest thing ever. The last thing I decided to do is put a little bit of jute twine right around the base and that way it kind of covers up any rough edges from the decoupaging and I just think that finishes it off and I'm so happy with it. For this DIY, I end up just using this darker nautical rope, a bunch of different scrapbook papers, and this old shelf that I just had laying around and wasn't using. And the first thing that I'm going to do is sand it down so that I can paint it and the paint will stick. And I'm just using my little sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree. Then I'm gonna wipe off all the dust with a cloth. Then I picked all of these cute little coastal themed pieces of scrapbook paper and now I'm just gonna cut them down to little strips that will fit on my board. And I'm gonna be making a sign with these and I used my little cutter to do that. And now I'm just figuring out my pattern that I wanna do and then I'm going to Mod Podge them all down to this board. And I'm going to just start from one end, work towards the middle, and then go on the other end and work back towards the middle. That way I establish the pattern that I did and I can make sure that everything is even and I'm using my little brayer to flatten it out and get rid of bubbles and I have all of my tools like the brayer and other things down in my Amazon store if you need something like that feel free to check that out it does help my channel and it doesn't cost you anything extra and thanks in advance if you do that and like I said I am just going ahead and arranging these with Mod Podge and I'm loving this paper I got it at Hobby Lobby it was like a coastal themed little mini book it is just gorgeous and then I overlap those little striped ones right in the middle because I just just love them. Now that it's all on, I'm just making sure I get all the bubbles out and I'm going to sand all of the edges going all the way around because sometimes you get a little hangover of the paper and this gives it a nice clean edge and it kind of makes it look like it's part of the board. And then I'm going to clean up all the dust from the sanding with my little ladybug vacuum. It's just a lifesaver. I'm using my white primer kills paint to paint all around the edges because some of them were unfinished. And this way, it just gives it again more of that coastal look, kind of distresses the edges a little bit. I'm gonna dry it off with my heat tool so that I can move forward more quickly. I'm not the most patient person, so I don't like to wait. Now I'm going to get out a pencil and after I open up my nautical rope, and I'm gonna write out the word beach going vertically down my sign. And that way I know exactly where to put my rope. I'm gonna put some Mod Podge over the top just to make sure that everything is sealed and the paper doesn't come off. And once that is dry, then I'm going to start cutting my rope to cover the letters that I drew out. I'm actually gonna do all the straight pieces first. So it looks like I'm doing this in a weird order, but I just thought it'd be easier to get all the straight pieces on there and I'm hot gluing them right to the sign. And then I will come back in and do the curved pieces. And I'm loving how this is turning out. It was actually super easy, honestly. It looks like it would be kind of hard to do, but it's really not. I thought it would take longer than it did. It was super fast and actually it's kind of fun. I enjoyed doing it. Now that I got to the B, that's the last letter. And I was looking at this thinking, it's almost a little dark and I wanted it to look like maybe the sand was hitting it, you know, so it would look a little worn. So I took a white Arteza paint marker and I just lightly brushed over the top of every letter and that gave it that really beachy kind of coastal look that I was going for. And I love it because think about it, there's always sand in the air and everything gets misted with it. And this kind of gave it that feel. So it's super, super cute. On the back of the sign, there were these little holes from where the shelf was. So what I did was I cut some more nautical rope and I hot glued it down into those little grooves where the holes are. 
And once I did that, I took two screws and I thought this is a very heavy shelf so I couldn't just put it on with glue. And I used my drill and I screwed in a screw on each side and made it really secure and that's it. I absolutely love how this turned out and honestly, it was super easy. Let me know what you think in the comments. I hope you like it. This is going to be another really easy DIY. I am using a DIY that I previously made, but it doesn't really fit my decor, so I decided I would go ahead and use a blade and take off the canvas that I had painted. I'm just going to pull that all off, and I'll use the canvas, the opposite side that I had painted on for something else. I removed the staples, which are not the easiest thing, by the way. And then I sanded all the way around every surface on this because I just wanted it to not, you know, give me splinters. And I've got this really cool wide ribbon from burlapfabric.com, which I will also have linked down below. I'm just going to cut a piece that fits across the entire frame, and I'll use that shortly. I'm going to use my Kills primer, and I am going to just lightly paint every part of this little frame, inside, outside, back, everything. But I'm not going to do a full coverage because I want it to look distressed, and I want some of that wood to peek through. And I'm going to use my heat tool so that I can dry that quickly and I'll have a link in my Amazon store for that. Now I'm going to use my staple gun and I'm going to attach this piece of ribbon that I cut to the back of my little frame. And I'm going to use quite a few staples because I want it to stay in place. And I do go later and I reinforce with a little bit of hot glue too, you know, just in case it frays. And I have these little teeny sticks that I cut and I'm going to do a little pattern where I kind of go back and forth like V, upside down V, V, and cross over the tops and bottoms of each one. I'm going to hot glue the those in place. Like I said, this is super simple, very rustic, and it will fit with all kinds of different farmhouse decor, primitive, or you know, just whatever you do rustic. And I just thought it would be really cute to add nature with you know some of my Dollar Tree stuff, and it's an easy project. And then I'm going to take a little bit of my antique wax from Waverly and I'm going to use a baby wipe. I'm just going to wipe it on lightly on all of the surfaces where I painted it with the wipe. Now I'm going to take a little piece of rope and I'm going to hot glue that to the back and then reinforce that with a couple of staples as well. So I have a nice little hanger that you won't see when it's hanging up. Off camera I added some little greenery that was rub on stickers from Dollar Tree and I just love it. For this DIY, I'm going to use a mason jar, some faux leather from burlapfabric.com that they were so kind to send me, and I'll put all the information in my description box, some florals that I got from Dollar Tree and Target, and then I've got those pop-up stickers you can see in the background too. Right now I'm going to use my square, and I'm going to cut a strip of the faux leather. I'd already cut out a piece to begin with, but now I'm just going to cut one that's just about the right width for what I'd like to see on my mason jar. And I'm going to cut that out after I've drawn the line on the back side so you'll never see it again. And I do a lot of trimming to get this just right. I don't put it all on camera because, you know, who wants to watch me trim? Now I'm going to take out these little um, pop-up stickers. I love these things because with my metallic silver paint from Folklore, you can actually make them look like little rivets. Now I'm going to paint them with my plaster colored chalk paint first because that'll make it easier for the silver to stick. And I don't know why I only painted two to begin with. I actually need four of these so I do go back and paint two more. I don't know what I was thinking. And then I've got these two little boards that I got out of a little shelf from the Target dollar spot and I used the shelf for something else and I just kept those two little shelf pieces and I decided that they would be great for this project. So what I'm going to do is put them together with some hot glue 
and then it'll look like planks that way. And it was already painted white and it's already a little distressed so I don't actually have to do anything else to that which was really really nice because hey when you get that and you use it as extra pieces from a different DIY it's like bonus and it's almost like free. Now I'm going to take my little mason jar and I'm going to put a boatload of hot glue on there and I'm just going to stick it right on the planks. And it actually stays really well, but I'm going to also use my faux leather and I'm going to glue that down on either side and then I'm gonna cut off the edges. So it looks like it's just kind of wrapped around it. And it's just one more little form of security. I'm gonna tuck a little hot glue under little parts of the faux leather too to just kind of stick it to the jar as well. And you can see me doing that right here. And I'm already loving the way this is looking. It's very fresh and with the white, I just really like it. I, you know, I like some of the darker distress stuff too but sometimes it's just nice to see something a little brighter. Now I'm going to trim the edges and then tack them down with some more hot glue. Now I'm gonna take those little pop-up stickers that I painted and I'm gonna put two on each side towards the corners of the faux leather. So it looks like little tacks or rivets holding down the faux leather. Just kind of brings that look up a little higher and makes it look a little more finished and expensive. And I love the way that looks. After trimming the faux leather, I had another piece left and I decided to trim that even narrower and make a faux hanger. <laughs> We're into faux here today. I don't think it's going to be strong enough to hold this up, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it real thin. I'm going to attach it to each sides and then up and over the top. And then I'll make another little rivet on each side. And that'll be like a faux hanger on the back. I'll actually put a little bit of jute twine for a real hanger and secure that with tons of hot glue and some masking tape across it as well. And I just think this will give it such a cute look, but at the same time, I'll have a practical way to hang it without you know breaking anything and I'm gonna actually use two of the smaller pop-up stickers to make the little rivets or tacks for the side there for that top faux hanger it'll just look like it's attached then by something a little bit more sturdy And then I'm gonna take the greenery that I got and I'm gonna trim it down to size. And I'm actually going to position it and use some hot glue to attach it to the inside of the mason jar. That way I can get it exactly where I want it. I'm not looking to like fill the whole thing up. I actually want it to kind of lean up against those little planks. I think that's gonna look really cute. And then I'm gonna add the little, I think those are tulips, I'm not sure. They look like mini tulips, I don't know what they are. <laughs> anyway, it's so pretty and I'm just gonna do the same thing there. And I'm also going to tack down the leaves a little bit so they lay the way I want them to look. And instead of kind of bunched together, I like it to look a little more spread out. I can just add a drop of hot glue, you won't even see it, and that way it'll just look really, really nice. Now, if you decide to make this, you could use any florals that you want that fit your decor. You could change them out for different seasons. For this DIY, I've got this frame from a thrift store, and then I've also got this little cow moo sign from Dollar General. Super cute. I took it apart, and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint this frame white. I know it's already distressed and all that, but I wanted it to be a little bit whiter, and then I'm going to re-distress it. Yeah, crazy, right? But I just like the whiter look. So I'm also going to paint the center. It takes about three coats to cover that because I want to get rid of all the black. I used my white kills primer for the white paint. 
Now that it's all painted white, I'm going to take my sanding sponge from Dollar Tree and I'm going to distress it again. Basically, it's just revealing the parts that were already sanded down, but now it's a whiter frame, so I'm really liking that. And then I've got this scrap paper from Hobby Lobby, and what I'm going to end up with is this red gingham print, and I'm just going to cut it to size by putting it inside the back where it's kind of cut out, and then I can use a blade on the front and get it down to the right exact size. Then after that's done, I'm going to put some Mod Podge down, and I'm going to go ahead and attach it right to the inside of the frame. I don't know if I mentioned it, but this is a super easy DIY. I promise you, if you can find a frame like this and some little element for the middle, you could do this so quickly. It was very fast. So now my paper's down. So I took the little cow and I hot glued it down. You could add anything you want to make this match your decor. And this one is done. I love it. I found this adorable wood rainbow at the Dollar Tree. It must be a new item because I'd never seen it before. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting it with different shades of kind of like a turquoise-ish color. So I'm starting with Peacock and I'm going to do that first indent and then the edges going up to the risen part. Then I'm going to take some agave and I'm going to do the next indented part and the edges between the two raised parts for that one. Then I'm going to take the color pool, these are all Waverly chalk paints, and I'm going to do the next indent and just do the exact same thing that I have already done and finish up all the edges on that as well. Then I'm going to take the color crystal, which is lighter, and I'm going to do the very last indented part. So as you can see, it's kind of like an ombre turquoise type of thing. And then I'm going to use Warm Buff from Apple Barrel Paints, and I'm going to do all that raised part of the rainbow on the front. my antique wax by Waverly and I am going to stain all of the rest of the raw wood which is the very bottom the inside of the rainbow and then the back and I'm wiping off the excess I just want the contrast of the stained wood the warm buff and then the pretty colors that are making my ombre rainbow and I'm loving this it's kind of a cross between farmhouse and boho so that's I think a style that I really like and I'm kind of realizing that more and more as I make things now I do get a little bit of my antique wax on the front so I'm just going to take some of the paint and I'm going to go back and touch up those spots where I went over it and the reason I'm showing you this is because this is very hard to do without going over the lines because taping this would be really a pain so I thought it would just be easier to go over and do the touch-ups afterwards and actually I don't think I did too bad I feel like it should have been worse like I should have had way more paint everywhere anyway but this worked out great I touch it up and it looks so so cute and I'm absolutely loving this piece <music> You'll have to tell me what you think down in the comments. It was so easy, you guys. There's just no reason that anyone couldn't do this with any colors that go with your decor. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so happy that you were here and I can't wait to see you in my next video. I appreciate the time that you take to watch my videos. It means so much. And remember, you are a blessing to me.